Thank you, Professor Yuha and uh, uh, Professor Yasajian uh, for the uh, great presentation. So today I will uh, present my uh, latest case. Uh, it's a minimally invasive target bypass surgery guided by three dimension DSA. So I come from Huasan uh, Hospital. Uh, we have, uh, our department is a huge department uh, around 800 beds and 40 operating rooms. And we are the uh, ACNS and the WFS uh, training center. So this is my personal experience in bypass. Uh, last year, I have 1,039 cases so totally, I have took uh, more than 7,000 cases uh, in 110 hospitals in China and India. So my personal record is five minutes and 40 seconds to finish a stoma. So this is uh, my latest case. Uh, uh, it's a female patient. You can see uh, she suffered from uh, episode, uh, episodic weakness in right limbs for five months. The DS You can see uh, some uh, uh, small infection on the uh, left hemisphere. So this is uh, uh, the angiogram. So uh, this is our surgical plan, uh, selecting the donor and the recipient artery, uh, use three dimension DSA. So we measure the uh, measuring the distance between donor and the recipient artery from the uh, three dimension reconstructed uh, uh, DSA. So you can see the AP view, the distance between the donor and the recipient artery is around uh, 9.8 millimeter. From the uh, lateral view, it's only uh, 2.3 millimeter. So then we calculating the length of the skin incision and the diameter of the bone flap we needed to perform the uh, bypass. So uh, we select two landmarks uh, on the uh, EC, uh, ECA angiogram uh, between the two small bifurcation of the uh, STA. And uh, we select the bone flap uh, around the uh, Two millimeter, uh, two two centimeter diameter. So uh, this is a, a segment of STA we selected uh, between the two bifurcation. So this is a two bifurcation is the landmarks in in surgery to remind uh, to remind us uh, which segment is is. So the length of the uh, dissected. Uh, uh, STA is around 40 millimeter. So this is a, a targeted uh, recipient artery. Uh, we measured from the uh, three dimension DSA. It's around uh, 14 uh, millimeter. So uh, if you add the uh, distance uh, of the temporal clips, uh, normally, it uh, needs at least uh, the diameter of the bone flap. Uh, it's around two centimeter. So this is our surgical plan. Uh, uh, use the uh, rear uh, surgical uh, angle and uh, position. So this is a rear surgical view. We can see uh, the three dimension DSA should exactly uh, same. Uh, anatomy of the vessel uh, as a real surgical view. So this is a, a video in the operation. So the skin incision is uh, four centimeter and this is uh, dissecting the, uh, I use a cut down technique to harvest the STA.
use a monopolo to dissect it. It's a very fast and uh, safe. The small bo uh, bone flap is around the uh, two centimeter. So then uh, after ligated the distal end of the STA, we cut it and the trim the uh, one end of the STA. So then cut the arachnoid membrane, then temporal clip of the recipient artery. So here you, you see the another recipient artery, but it's uh, too thin and uh, too small. So we select the uh, more deeper one. It's uh, uh, more thicker and uh, larger, but uh, the problem is uh, it's quite deep. So use the uh, two temporal clips to stop the blood flow. You can see the intra uh, the the intra uh, artery pressure is quite low, so it's uh, quite uh, pink, but not red. So may, then make this cut off one piece of the vessel wall, an oval shape. Then make the anastomose. So it's quite fast. Then another side. Then remove the distal temporal clip. You can see the stoma is quite deep. Uh, it's all in the CSF. So then remove the uh, temporal clip of STA. Now you can see the stoma. And this is a ICG. Show the good patency of the stoma. So you can see this is the incision of the uh, scalp. It's around the four centimeter. So this is the size of the uh, bone flap. You can see it's uh, smaller than two uh, centimeter. So this is uh, after the surgery, we, uh, you can see the uh, very small hole. Uh, actually, it's a keyhole approach. So now the patient recovered very well.
So this is the uh, incision, and uh, we keep uh, the hair of the patient. Okay, thank you. It's a short presentation for a case. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Shubin. It looked very nice. Technique, you, do you think that you turn in all cases that way? You will do more and more. Yes, yes, definitely. Yes, sure. Opening. Yeah, I will do. Uh, I will try uh, this new technique again. That looks good. Mm -hmm. Some is there questions, comments? Okay, go ahead, Hello, sir. Go ahead. Hello, Dr. Yuha. Hello, Victor. This Hello, was Victor. Uh, these lectures uh, were very, very impressive and unforgettable. It's uh, impressive to look uh, the master of neurosurgery as Yasser Hill, and also you, Professor Yuha. Thanks a lot to bring us these wonderful lectures. Thank you very, Thank you very much. Thank you, great pleasure. Okay, more comments? Mm, now I'd just like to say thank you, yeah. Go ahead. Chagla from Bombay, yeah. Just like to say thank you to Professor Yasha Gil, as well as Yuha. It's, it's wonderful to see this kind of work uh, in this horrible times. And uh, we're grateful that we could come together and share some of this. Fantastic. And uh, this is the way forward, micro neurosurgery. It's the cheapest for countries like China and India, for sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Hello. Go ahead. Go ahead. Dr. Harshad Parikh from Bombay again. Welcome. Hi, Professor. Hello. As always, you arrange some great webinars. I have been attending your webinars regularly. And today, when I saw Professor Yasser Gil delivering a lecture, we were in a journey to a history of neurosurgery and the vascular surgery. It is one of the most amazing lectures which we have seen and heard. Thank you very much for arranging such lecture. It is very enlightening and wonderful. Thank you very much. Yeah, welcome. Thank you very much for your kind words. Yeah, thank you. Um, ben, we have a question from a panelist. Uh, uh, okay. Of all those cases, how many did you make an extracranial intracranial bypass what okay ECIC bypass yeah i don't know if i understand the question uh, perhaps uh, we told more than 7000 okay. yes okay more than 7000 should be experience yes world record not to be beaten okay <laughs> you better start early <laughs> okay, more comments, questions? Now's your chance. Don't be shy. Let me see here. Okay. You know, I'm not a neurosurgeon, uh, Yuha and Ben, but but Dr. Yazagor, he's a history of microneurosurgery. He is the history of microneurosurgery, right? Right. Yeah, he's the founder and founder of microneurosurgery, actually. He developed everything, the microscope and, and instruments and techniques. So this is everything is in a package. So he developed everything hectically after returning from USA, from mm -hmm. Burlington. So he developed everything in the coming years. and. Uh, so in five years after returning from USA, it was, everything was done. 
balance microscope and uh, many instruments and clips for another surgery. So then all the world went to Zurich, more than 3,000. The researcher came during his time and uh, then went home and spread the message of micro neurosurgery. So actually all the 50,000 neurosurgeons around the world, they are students of Professor Yazagi. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. Oh, there's a question here. Let me see if I can get to it. Um, let's see here. Do you gentlemen see any questions there in the panel? I, I'm missing one, I think. I think I'm missing one here. Okay, if you have any questions, uh, you could ask directly or you can put it in the panel. Okay, I'm trying to catch the questions in the panelists. Oh, here's one from Yasmin Lamus. Do you prefer STA over external carotid? Does that make sense? Do you mean the STA bypass? Uh, yes, instead yes. of uh, ECA, radio artery, or saphenous vein, uh, high flow bypass? I believe Yasmin means yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. that. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, uh, just as uh, professor, uh, professor Yasagi uh, mentioned that uh, uh, if you do the double bypass of STA to MCA, normally it can feed the whole MCA territory. Yeah, if the patient uh, STA diameter is larger than 1.5 millimeter, normally uh, it's enough to replace the MCA territory. And if you use some progressive clip, uh, if the uh, uh, brain have some demand for the blood flow, it, uh, the STA can uh, expand it uh, a lot and uh, uh, According to our uh, research, uh, the, S, uh, the double STA MCA can uh, supply more than 150 uh, millimeter per minute. Uh, this kind of uh, blood volume, uh, it's equal to a high flow bypass. So sometimes uh, we, you, you can use uh, this kind of uh, double bypass STA MCA. But uh, sometimes if, the, if we want to replace the blood flow of ICA, it's especially the dominant site, like, uh, I mean, the, the ICA not only feeded the uh, same hemisphere, but also the contralateral ACA territory. So this kind of uh, condition, we want to replace the ICA's uh, blood flow. Uh, we need the high flow bypass, uh, especially the saphenous main by high flow bypass. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. We have a question actually for Dr. Yazagil, but he's not here. Maybe Yuha could answer it. Uh, uh, Pablo Villanueva says it would be very interesting to know uh, Dr. Yazagil's opinion about endovascular treatments. And Yuha probably knows that, correct? Uh, it would be very interesting to know. I mean, next year, if we can travel, we can go to Istanbul when there is the Ubertura two weeks course, life course, and professor is certainly there. We can ask there. So okay. I, I think uh, he will have a very complex answer. Okay. Okay, more comments and but questions? I don't know if we can travel. It, it doesn't look so good now the situation well we can go to turkey <laughs> yeah yeah this is this is what i mean to istanbul yeah professor bean good morning hey lewis hi good morning one uh, technical question where, uh -huh. where you choose what is the vessel you prefer to perform the bypass precentral or post central and if you have difference with different anatomy anatomy pattern of the patient because you, you know some patients have the different pattern anatomy of the middle cerebral artery bifurcation and where you decide to choose the M3 vessel is precentral 
port central is dependent on anatomy. Where is your, your election, your management, please? Thank you. Okay, the donor artery actually uh, mostly uh, for the, uh, it's from the scalp uh, arteries. Uh, anteriorly, we have some uh, frontal branch of STA. Uh, in the middle, uh, it's a parietal branch of STA. Sometimes we have a post auricular artery can substitute the, uh, the parietal branch of STA. On the posterior side, we have some uh, occipital artery. So for the scalp, uh, we have this kind of uh, uh, feeders. And for the recipient artery, it depends on the uh, angiogram results. So sometimes if it's, uh, 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 it's a frontal uh, lobe uh, ischemia, we can use a frontal uh, donor artery. And uh, if it's a, a inferior trunk uh, MCA, we can use a parietal branch of the STA. And uh, if it's uh, occipital uh, lobe uh, ischemia, we can use the uh, occipital artery. It, it, it depends the ischemic area. Okay, Omar Nadar asked, to what extent one can use the loop in microsurgery rather than the microscope? Oh, I never use the loop uh, because for this kind of uh, uh, anastomos, we need a, a lot of, uh, uh, at least uh, maybe 20 times uh, magnifying. So we use a microscope, always. I have also never used loops. I have al always taken microscope. Okay. I, I think this is unnecessary step to take the loops between. Okay, Danu Rolian asks, this is, a uh, this is a question for Professor Zubin. Um, how many hours of practice or specimen anastomosis in the lab needs to be done to master microvascular anastomosis? <laughs> it depends, you know. If you are very, you have very stable hands, uh, maybe two weeks training is enough. Uh, but uh, I heard that uh, some Japanese uh, neurosurgeons, they insist that you have at least 300 uh, anastomos uh, on rat, 300 bypass surgery on rats. Then you can go to the human. But uh, uh, in my experience, uh, it's unnecessary because I have a at least the four assistants uh, and they, uh, after my first anastomos, I uh, let them do the second uh, anastomos. Normally they just take longer time, but uh, uh, the, the quality is quite fine. Yeah, and then they, they can uh, getting uh, faster and faster. Now, like my assistant, uh, Dr. Liao, he can finish the, uh, the anastomos around 20 minutes. And uh, now the patency rate is uh, 100%. Yeah. Okay. So he don't, he, he don't spend it a lot of time in the laboratory. Okay, next question. Kusei Al Alaba asks, how do you follow those patients postoperatively? Uh, post do you depend on the clinical status of the patient or do you follow up in geography? I, uh, normally we uh, follow up the angiography because you know, uh, the Moya Moya case, most of the Moya Moya case are bilaterally. So after the uh, first operation, they will come back after six months and we will do the angiogram to uh, follow up the first uh, uh, operations results. And then after the second time, uh, after half a year, they will come back for the second time follow-up. Thank you. Martin Ray asks, what kind of antiplatelet therapy you use after an STA MCA bypass performed in a ruptured aneurysm case? No, I never use that. Never use it, okay. Yeah. Okay, a question from Andrea Brunon, Brunori. Do you believe ACLAND approximately, approximately useful 
on the recipient vessels. Does that make sense? Do you see that question? Do you believe ACLAN approximator useful in the recipient vessel? Does that make sense, that question? Perhaps. No, I don't. Per, okay, we'll just go on to the next okay. one. There's lots of questions. Um, the op people are opening up. Okay, Pablo asked another question. What kind and the thickness of suture are you using for the example you show? Any particular technique of where to begin making the suture? Uh, it's a 10-0 uh, protein uh, suture by uh, Ethicon. Okay. Dr. Mammon asks, what is the best area for natural graft and which is better, natural or artificial graft? I only use a natural graft, never use uh, artificial. Okay. Because, you know, this kind of uh, vessel, they are, uh, they are just like a, a live organ. Uh, they can, uh, they can expansion or uh, they have their own function. So if you, it's an artificial one, actually they couldn't be uh, regulated by the nerve. Okay. Um, and you, how you can let me know when I've asked uh, enough questions, okay? Let me ask another question. Uh, what's your opinion on using continuous suture instead of interrupted ones? Uh, will it help to save time? Uh, I can uh, answer the question. I only use the uh, interrupted one. Uh, very uh, uh, seldom, uh, if you, you uh, it's a side <coughs> suicide uh, anastomosis. <coughs> On the back side of the uh, anastomosis, uh, we use uh, uh, continuous suturing. But uh, because the uh, stoma can be expanded, uh, just as uh, Yasavir mentioned, uh, we use, we insist to use uh, the interrupted one because according to our follow-up, uh, the stoma can, the stoma's uh, diameter can expand it from one millimeter to more than uh, three millimeter. So if you use this uh, continuous suturing, you limited the, the, the expansion of the stoma. Okay, Pablo, uh ask, Pablo Villanueva ask, what opinion do you have of placenta training? This is because many places in my country do not have rats or animals to practice. So what's your opinion on placenta training? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, this is a, a good option for placenta training, yes. Okay, Yasmin Lamus asks, Professor uh, Ben, uh, do you use heparin intraoperatively, interoperatively, or just antiplatelet after bypass? Yes, I just use heparin to irrigate the surgical field and the intracavity of the donor artery or recipient artery, but not uh, systematically use it. Are you using and, that? Uh, Go ahead. Anti antiplatelet uh, drugs, uh, it depends, you know. Uh, around uh, uh, 10 percent. Uh, if the patient have some uh, TIA uh, preoperative rate, I will use it. But if uh, the patient is quite stable, I never use. Uh, I don't use anti platelet drugs after bypass. Okay, Dr. Mamon asks, are you are you using heparin or warfarin, and for how long do you close the vessels? I already. <laughs> Oh, you're, I'm sorry, did I, yeah. I didn't ask the yeah, same yeah. question again, yeah. I hope. <laughs> um, I never use the warfarin. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, Omar Nadar asks, do you do bypass in one-step surgery or in two-step surgery? For example, first harvesting the superficial temporal artery, then the next step of the bypass. Two-step surgery. Does that make yes. sense? Uh, if you if you want to the bypass, you uh, at first you ha you have to have it to the STA. Yes, it's a, it's a one stage uh, surgery. Okay. Yeah, Pablo mm -hmm. Villanueva says that. Thank you. He's doing a book on placenta training, 
Uh, and this webinar was a, a good uh, source of information. Okay, Mamon asked another question. What complication do you face in the bypass? Uh, uh, for the Moyamaya case, actually uh, a lot of uh, complications, including uh, the seizure, the edema of the brain, and the, the, some uh, hypoperfusion or hypoperfusion, uh, some uh, even some uh, hemorrhage or uh, some uh, infarction. So in my theory, uh, is uh, the, uh, the uh, complication rate is quite low. Uh, it's around uh, uh, 3% for uh, pe uh, uh, perioperative uh, infarction. It's quite low, lower than uh, the normal level. It's around 5%. And uh, um, the mortality rate is quite uh, low. It's uh, around 1.5 uh, every 1,000 case. Yeah. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I think we got most of the questions. Uh, does anybody have a question they'd like to ask before we close? Yeah, yes, uh, John, can I Go say ahead, something? Of course. Of course. Yeah, uh, good morning from Little Rock and good day to everybody. Thank you for these webinars and thanks for the dedication of Professor Ernest Nemi, Professor Zupi, and John for teaching young generation. Great lectures. Of course, uh, Professor Yazerji lecture is beyond evaluation. Just a comment on the training in addition to what's mentioned, uh, placenta and rats, of course, uh, the live cadaver uh, model, which uh, you can practice on the real anatomy. It's a great model for uh, practicing bypasses. And hopefully I will explain more in the coming uh, uh, webinar with Professor uh, Hermes Nemi in the next meeting in November. Oh, great. So we thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. Great. You're giving uh, a lecture yeah, next week? Yeah. That's great. Uh, really, thank you very much, Emad. So, it was a very nice comment. So, Emad has, uh, is it more than 10 years ago, you created the pulsating head? Yeah, maybe uh, 20 years, since 2000. 20 years, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The time is time is flying. So, <laughs> yes, uh, very good model, uh, yeah. pulsating head connected yeah. to the cardiac pump. So, it, it looks like real, real Life surgery. brain, and you can, you can do everything. So, this is great. Great yeah. invention, invention, and uh, really next week we have the Shaolin Congress. So uh, Emad Abut will tell about the cadaver lab in the Arkansas Science Institute, Little Rock, and uh, Alex Christ will give a presentation of the importance of uh, cadaver dissection for microneurosurgery. To be great lectures, and uh, please join us next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. This is Shaolin Congress, so our webinar will be then in two weeks again. Okay, very good. In Thanks. Two weeks, in two weeks, Friday. Yes, two weeks, next okay. week. Yeah. Very good. Okay, thank you very much, Yuha, and thanks all the panelists for participating, and a special thanks for Ben Zhu, who's multitask and not only translated into Chinese, but did some screen sharing too. Thank you very much, Ben. And we'll see you next uh, in two weeks. Thank you very bye much. Bye. See you. See you. Greetings to Little Rock. Bye bye. Bye bye. Everybody.